All right, everyone, so I've got a problem I need your help to solve. I need to make a decision on investing more money into old red F-150 that I've had for a long time, tried and true, or new to me, this Ford E350 uh, mobile command unit, uh, invest in that to keep chasing aviation and getting more original aviation content on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. So let's get into it. So first of all, let me clear the air for anybody who's new to the channel. This is not an automotive channel or it's not an aviation channel that has suddenly turned automotive. Uh, just, I've been driving this truck for about six years ever since we've, we've started this channel. I put a lot of miles on it, all right? So let me give you, give you the specs first on the F-150, then we'll talk about the mobile command unit here, right? So the, uh, the F-150 Old Red is a 2006 model F-150. It's got what I call the, the baby eight, right? The 4.6 liter V8, which has been very, very good, very uh, uh, affordable to operate in the economic engine for me, right? Automatic transmission with five speed. I believe it has the 355 highway gears. Uh, it came with these little tiny steel wheel tires on it that I, I thought just looked awful. So I swapped them out for uh, aluminum wheels and I got a good deal on, somebody had a brand new four x four so the wheels on here, the tires on here, uh, were new four x four takeoffs, and they had probably a couple thousand miles. I have literally put on between 90 to 100,000 miles on the tires on this truck. So truck's been a great truck. Uh, got it with 160,000 miles on it, and I now have uh, about 285,000 miles on it, and literally doing just little maintenance like spark plug changes, obviously oil changes. Um, and I think I replaced some of the hose and rubber under the hood, you know, that just gets dry and so forth. It's been a great truck. I think it gets about 18 miles per gallon on the highway. So, eh, okay, not the greatest, uh, but it's been a good truck. So the specs on the E350, and a little backstory on that one. So this is much older. It's 24 years old. It is a um, year, year model 2000, which I know for the E350 and the whole van line, those are great years. I understand like, I think it's like 99 through 2003 is like the prime year for this van, right? 2004, I don't think anything Ford made was good. Uh, doing a little bit of reading on that kind of stuff, but. So E350, uh, it has a 7.3 liter diesel engine, turbo diesel, uh, power stroke, which I'm hearing more and more from everybody I talk to, like that is the holy grail of engines that Ford has ever made or pretty much anybody that has made a diesel engine has made this is the engine to have. Um, I picked it up at a local auction um, at my airport across the way. There was a, there is a sheriff's department aviation division, and that's also where they they keep a lot of different uh, vehicles that they confiscate or whatnot. So. Another bit of the, the backstory to this, as you can see, it looks like an ambulance. It sounds like an ambulance. It feels like an ambulance, but it's not. It was actually uh, made, the conversion was made by Wheeled Coach in Orlando, Florida. Ironically enough, they are still in business. I reached out to them about a week ago when I got this to try to get some details behind you know, the story of it. It was never, ever used as an ambulance. Never, right? The inside was built out for the Environmental Protection Agency out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I don't know exactly what they did uh, in the Environmental Protection Agency, but the inside is set up like an office. There's a little desk, there's 110, 115 um, volt outlet throughout, and there's radios set up for it and all that kind of stuff. So that's really interesting uh, to me that it was never actually used or abused as an ambulance. Um, Sometime around 2014, my uh, local airport, that county there is Calhoun County, the Sheriff's Department uh, went and purchased that. I don't even think it was at an auction. I think it was more of like a surplus sale. And maybe it was within the community of, of uh, government entities like Sheriff or whatnot, they were able to uh, go there. But they picked this up very cheap from what I understand. And it had, in 2014, 
from what I understand, uh, the guy that purchased it from the department showed up and he said there was three of these in a dark warehouse off in the corner, along with the helicopter and some other parts. So they picked this up really cheap with 48,000 miles in 2014, right? So they brought it back here and they stickered it up. You can see there's still some of the glue left from, the, they just peeled off the sheriff stickers off of it. Um, so it's, it's fresh, freshly peeled off there. The sheriff's department basically used this as their mobile command unit um, for whatever you know, issues they've got around here. They need a, an on-site office. Uh, and I picked it up this you know, last week with 58,000 miles on it, right? So super low miles, but it's also 24 years old, right? So some pros and cons here, but that's kind of the, the gist of the backstory of both of these trucks. Um, let's kind of walk around and, and show you some of the details of, of what's in it and so forth. All right, I had to change shirts. It's getting a little too hot to be wearing black uh, summertime here in the Florida. So anyway, back to uh, Old Red, and I want to get you guys' opinions, so literally blow up the comments, because uh, I want to hear some feedback. More so, well, no, on both trucks. So um, going back to old tried and true uh, Old Red here, um, it's been a great great truck, great family vehicle. Uh, I've, you've used it to haul camera equipment to all the different uh, you know, air show stuff, it's still competitions. The interior is in great condition. The, uh, the back seat, is it's, it's okay as far as space, but it's been good for the kids. We got the uh, the baby seat in there still for hauling. Uh, almost all the kids are ready to be in the uh, regular regular seats. But this is an easy truck to work on. I mean, not that I've had to do a whole lot to it, right? But it's an easy truck to work on, and that's my biggest concern. I think moving forward, going from this tried and true to that new to me have have no idea, no clue. Um, and being it's a 7.3 diesel, even though that is the engine to have, right? I understand diesels are more expensive to uh, keep and operate, at least I, I feel that they are. Somebody said that in comparison, this engine here holds like five, five and a half quarts, whereas that engine will ho hold like 14 quarts and this massive uh, oil filter. So let's just say the oil changes are gonna double uh, but as you can see, this engine compartment is very wide open, easy to get to things, you know, like changing the spark plugs and hoses and all that kind of stuff. So maintenance wise, this is, this is easy access. Whereas the other truck, eh, not so much. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so uh, it's been an economical truck to own, operate, it gets pretty good uh, gas mileage for a truck going down the highway and so forth. And I don't know, I know diesels are supposed to be more economic because they've got low end torque and less RPM and that kind of stuff, but this thing is heavy. I mean, this this is a lot of truck, right? This is, understand F-150, kind of like a baby truck. I get that. But just me mostly driving around and going from air show to air show and interviews and so forth, it's, it's served its purpose, except for, all right, let's get into that for a second. Except for, I like to camp, right? And here's the thing, it's not just, camping per se, because I could prefer, I would prefer a hotel over camping. But when you go to these air shows and these different events, it is a lot more fun, it's a lot more enjoyable, and it's a lot more, I don't, I don't know, advantageous to stay on site. Why? Because after the show, here's what happens. That's when the real conversations start, right? Around the campfire, around the campsite or whatnot. Um, people have some food. Uh, maybe a couple beverages and that kind of thing, and that's when the stories and and uh, some of the major communication I've found over the years happen. So I try whenever possible to stay on site at the air show or the events, still events or whatnot. Um, it's just fun, right? But that's also where the conversations go. Camping wise, in a truck, now I've set up a tent, and that's not a big deal, but it's actually been more comfortable sleeping in the back of uh, this camper top, which is why, I, well, I originally got this to haul aircraft engines around in it, and that business didn't quite work out well. So <clears throat> I have used it to camp out several, several times, and you know you can put a blow-up mattress in the back here, and um, you know it's you can actually do quite well sleeping in the back of one of these. Um, it's a little bit quieter. No, it's a lot quieter than staying in a tent. Uh, as an example, I stayed at Sun Fun. 
Sun and Fun now has Amazon, right? And there are, are flights out of there like every 15 minutes or whatnot. So Amazon being there, and it's a real airport, it gets kind of noisy. So staying in a tent, staying in a tent, it's, it's hard for you to sleep. I guess maybe you can put some earplugs in or whatnot. All that to say, you know, it'd be great if I could be on the road and just pull off somewhere, not have to set up a tent um, and just be, and be comfortable. Uh, and, and just just really quickly, it's like stay out of state park, stay at an airport, stay at another camping facility, and just pull over, jump in the back, and this is not as accessible to do that. So enter in the new to me um, E350. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dine On Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com, your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys wanna join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel, sign up at several different levels, so check that out. So enter in the E350, which this one has the extended little area back there. I think it's like an extra two feet extended. It has the fiberglass top on it so you can actually stand up. I'm about six foot, so I still kind of have to bend down just a hair, otherwise my head hits. There is a spot in the, in the middle kind of I can fit in there, but this vehicle I can actually, you know, travel and walk around the back of it and, um, you know, just put some some bed in there and, and go to sleep so so I'm thinking long term this will be a lot more comfortable on the road but my concern again is the maintenance on it right so the big to do about this truck is that it is a year 2000 which is 24 years old but being that this was parked in a warehouse in the dark or whatnot the amazing thing about this is that it looks almost like a new truck it does not look like a 24 year old truck so in a roundabout way, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't want to pass up the opportunity to have a, a almost new truck, except it's been sitting around for 24 years, versus a, a, 20, a 2006 vehicle that's got 285,000 miles on it. This has 58,989. So it's like, which do you dump your money into, right? Uh, tried and true old red that will need some attention, and of course this will need some attention as well. Um, let me just show you the condition of this thing. All right, like just what I want, Brian, a sh uh, tour, a shop tour of your your old 24-year-old van. But seriously, the biggest, if, if any of you all have ever owned or worked in one of these commercial vans, right? These commercial vans, the very first thing you notice that goes bad really quick are the seat bolsters, right? They just, as you get off this, out of the seat, your butt slides off right here, and it just, it just tears this bolster up. Look, look, this... This is the original seat and the bolster. It is absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. So the seat conditions right away is just amazing. Um, the dash typically on these have been kind of like whitewashed from the sun, bleaching them out. And the dash is just, an, an, it's just perfect. It's almost like perfect. Same thing with the black and there just for verification there on the mileage. That's the original miles, and I don't see anything, any indication whatsoever that that's not a true statement. I was trying to think, like, did somebody roll the miles back on this? But why would a government entity like the Sheriff's Department at an auction that gave it away? And I'm not going to tell you the number right now in case I do want to sell this. You're like, well, Brian, you got this so cheap. I did. I'll admit to that, but I'm not going to tell you the number. Well, I do believe that's the original miles. But just check out the, the carpet of this. It's got a center... I guess computer holder that uh, the nut the bottom stripped out a little bit, but uh, that's to hold a computer, I assume. Yeah, the carpet is in great condition, both sides. 
Um, the steering wheel, you know, a lot of these things, uh, the grip is cracked, wore out, or just flaking away. I mean, this is 24 years old, and it's just perfect. It is perfect condition. Now, so some of you that operate an ambulance, I need help with this. All right, I figured out the master switch uh, turns on everything out back that turns on the power here. So you've got you know, different things here for your, and I'll turn the sound on in a minute, your yelp and wail, all the sound works. But up here, the primary, I assume the primary and secondary switch has to do with uh, the lights and strobes. That's currently not working. And lower power, I don't know if that means that it goes to a different setting so it's not so bright on the strobes and so forth. Siren horn, I, I saw some of, somebody in another video that converts this to operate off the horn. You can change in and out, but otherwise I don't really understand this part of it. So chime in on that. I looked up online, Ford has something with the diesels. Um, you can see here it's got a couple different options for, let me focus in on there. RPM control, and basically what I learned about that is when you put this thing, when you hit the uh, parking brake, when it's running, it bumps it up a few RPM to keep all the, everything charged. And this thing has two alternators. So just a quick shot at the back here. This is the non-ambulance mobile command center. You can see that we've got plenty of storage options throughout drawers and a center cabinet. I mean. Honestly, I would probably use it as a as a dresser with you know underwear and shorts and socks and stuff like that, and then other things. There is a bench seat here um, that you as a as a crew seat, I think they call it. There's enough for three seat belts there. Uh, honestly, I don't think that's safe for me or anybody else <laughs> going down the road. So that's probably going to get ripped out, and I'll, I'll probably build in a collapsible bed right there and maybe something i'm not sure if i want to have like a roll around chair um to go there or have the bed be part of it but uh, look at the the ceiling's got all kinds of lights and a grab bar there it's all fiberglass the uh the gel coat is just amazing it looks like a brand new i don't know the inside of a, a brand new boat or something like that let me jump in the back um before that there's a, a little dividing door there to i guess help keep the ac cooler up here compared to back there or just keep it quieter so that's that's kind of nice to have um of course armrests and all that kind of stuff to be driving along one thing i think it's really cool about this ambulance body but command center is that you open the back door and those lights turn on um as well as the inside a couple of the inside lights at kind of like a low dim setting so it's like a typical dome light just not really bright and when you put this in reverse, not only do the white lights um, there turn on, but those also illuminate to light up. It really is actually quite bright. So check out the inside of this. All right, so again, this was never an ambulance and you can see this is more or less the, the mobile command center desk area. You've got a uh, cabinet there, um, a foot well, um, wheel well you can put your feet up on storage cabinets like there's i don't know eight drawers and two cabinets and another area there to strap a bag down and whatever oh it's a mobile radio but there's an outlet right there to charge uh batteries there and another storage unit um up top it looks like they just stored uh plates and forks and coffee <laughs> uh, i think this one had some other radios uh that ra that motorola radio right there does work and it's on the police channel I have no use for that whatsoever, so I'll probably just you know, put that up for sale. But this is interesting to me, right? You've got uh, outlets um, right there to plug in computers or to charge batteries or whatnot. Now there's another one right there on the wall there. This, I assume, they used if... I don't know if you could use it as two different things to store a gurney or whatnot. Um, but again, this was never used as an ambulance. And these ratchet straps have never been used whatsoever. They've been still uh original zip ties there so again i think this piece here will probably come out and b build a bed unit that will fold and collapse into the wall um i'm not sure what else the ac unit up here guys again if you've ever let me let me get in here uh, 
Anybody ever operate an ambulance? I'm not really sure. I believe this AC system, um, I believe this AC system here runs off of the engine. It's not separate. I wish it, I wish it was, act like a camper. There is a uh, thermostat right there um, to operate it. It is nothing, both the cab air or the rear air is not working right now. So I'm not sure if it's something with the wiring or it's 24 years old and it simply has just leaked out the Freon. So that's the, that's the only major thing other than it needs tires that I found is that the AC is not working. So I can live with that. Something that's this old probably just needs an O-ring and recharge with Freon. But it would be neat if that system, that system operated independently um, from the rest of it. So when we come around to the, the front of the van where, where all the magic happens, right? The 7.3 liter power stroke. Um, as mentioned before, the F-150 has lots of space under the hood to work. This has like zero space to work. I understand the airbox cover will come off pretty easily. You can access probably the belts and some of the hoses. I don't know. I don't know. What does this thing need? Injectors, you know, 58,000 miles. Um, you know, do they have to be replaced? I, if so, I, I'm sure those are probably pretty expensive. And then you've got uh, an oil, high pressure oil pump to feed those injectors. And I don't know. What else? The only thing I've found under here that needs a little attention, this sat in the field there at the Sheriff's Department. There's a couple wires that looks like a mouse got up and started to chew through the conduit and then just a little bit on the insulator. So I'm going to have to, it's still, it looks like it's still intact. I think some really good quality electrical tape might, might solve that problem. Um, otherwise, it's got two batteries, one up here. And this little sticker here says that there's another one on the frame down below. Um, has two alternators, one on top, one below. And otherwise, this thing is pretty clean. I think there's a little bit of oil leak in the back side of the engine. Um, look under there, it's a little bit wet. And the tail cone of the transmission is slightly damp. So I think that may be the biggest concern on this thing. Being that it's 24 years old, is anything that's hose and rubber probably will need to be replaced. Um, that makes sense to me. And you think about aircraft uh, engines too, and that's a pretty common thing to have replaced after five or seven years, right? And this is 24 years old. But otherwise, the body is completely straight. There is a little bit of a fade uh, in the white, but honestly, I think that has to do with the fiberglass gel coat on top. I believe over the last however many years it sat outside, and you know, the gel coat got kind of burned by the sun. I think they just washed down over top of the paint. One more thing real quick guys, if you, uh, this is an older model ambulance body command center, right? But if you're familiar with this, this has a uh, 60 hertz, 110, 120, five volt AC plug-in right here. Typical just um, extension cord plug-in. So it's a shore power. Uh, I called wheeled coach and they could not find any of the original paperwork or schematics. They sent me like a generic one. So this is shore power, but I don't know what it powers. I don't know if it's just to top off the batteries while this is sitting in the shop ready to go, so it's fully ready to go. Um, I don't know if it's to power all the 110 outlets that are on there or to power everything in the back, which would be great. So far, I can't even get the 110 outlets to work. I think there's probably a breaker uh, in the control panel here in the middle that I have not had a chance to dive into just yet. I am assuming a breaker or a fuse and this will be coming active again but uh yeah if you could fill me in on that that'd be great yeah so let's jump in the back of this get amazing audio in here right so yeah guys blow it up in the comments like what's your experience with the 7.3 or the e350 in general uh in one way you know i know that f-150 is going to need a little bit of work coming up everything from paint um maybe a transmission um 
you know, just it's, it's getting old, almost 300,000 miles versus this 24 year old sitting around 58,000 mile van. Um, yeah, I, I mean, either way, I'm putting money into something and just trying to figure out which is a better investment. So I'm sure you all want to hear this thing start up. I love the sound of diesels. They, they uh, you know, most of my experience, honestly, has been driving. I used to work at the airport, the uh, the fuel trucks around with those diesels, international diesels. So um, they just sound cool, don't they? Of course, the other option could be a 2007 Honda Odyssey EXL, which I picked up, I don't know, four or five months ago for about 500 bucks. Has a blown head gasket, supposedly. Uh, 140,000 miles. I've seen many people convert these into vans, um, camper vans. You know, the seat folds down to nothing and you've got all the space and then if you want to, you put the seats back up and you get a seat for three or a office or a desk or whatnot. But interior needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, maybe a lot of bit in comparison. But you know, Honda, they go and go and go, and this probably gets about 24 miles per gallon compared to, I don't know what the diesel would get. All right guys, I would love for you to participate in a poll I'll put up in the community tab of our YouTube channel. So click on over to the community channel there and vote on which truck, which van, you would say would be the best air show camper camper van in your opinion thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com we really appreciate your support